Don't look under the internet. I found a slug outside their house and a prey mantis. So they Did have... you put them in a Thunderdome together? I should have. Just toss an yeah. axe in and did, see who Did you <laughs> salt the slug? What are you staring at? Are you okay? There's a bug? Oh, there sure is. Right above my head. I thought it was a spider dropping down on your head. I sure hope not. It's not. Good. Welcome to Don't Look Under the Internet, everyone. <laughs> I guess there's uh, no better time. Your your mother's favorite podcast about internet horror and creepy things we found on there. Your mother's. Hi, yeah. your mother. No, Janine. No, it's your mom. Maria. Yeah. And your mom. Rebecca. <laughs> and your mom, <laughs> listener. <laughs> That's, What's your uh, mom's name? Listeners. That's, hey! <laughs> that's Jason. Hello! That's Doug. What it do? And I'm Chris Brett. Just kidding. I'm Garfield now. John. Are you sure you're not Mario? <laughs> <Don't> I, <laughs> you sound like you're trying to seduce John! John, slather me with lasagna. Mm. Bring Odie into the mix. I don't know how to stop this. John. What are we doing today, Jason? <laughs> we are doing a, finally, a much, much needed break from some creepy pastas, as well as a long time coming listener request episode. Probably the most requested. The most, yes. So, I mean, we he we heard you guys. We promise. We promise. We've been planning on doing this for about a month. We had something lined up for Halloween. Uh, and here, <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we are doing... Lake City Quiet Pills. We did it. Um, yeah, we, we, you asked. We you asked. You received. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's how it goes in this in this world. You guys, I I know we've been doing this for a bit now, and I know that Mike's intros and bird scooters and attempts at segues have not gotten any better. And honestly, I think they've gotten worse. Probably. Probably. That's the trend that you're just gonna have to fucking deal with. But I think. You know what? Here we go. Uh, I have ha tasted my own medicine. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and it is bitter, much like the pills of the so, Lake City Quiet Pills. That was that was better than the last four Thank of, you. of your of your bird <laughs> scooters. Reaching, reaching yeah, my friend. It was. You're, so you're on you're on the uptick. You got an uptick going. So good. So where, where should we start this bad boy off at? Probably at the beginning. <laughs> You're not wrong. Hopefully, that, that I would, yeah. Although, or do you guys want to do this episode in reverse? Might we can as like well, thank huh? everybody. The old switcher was talking gonna... some bullshit, do the conclusion, what we think about it. And Hills, then... Quiet City Lake. <laughs> we should definitely a whole different start thing. with the ending. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, we are going to start at the beginning to, to eliminate any kind of confusion from here on out. Well, if that's the case, Doug. Um, help take us down this wonderful trip of, um, you know, there's not many lakes in this story. <laughs> I'm I, no, 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 I am so... Someone, someone I, transitioned me in I quick. am so into seeing where this is going. <laughs> I'm just very upset by the lack of lakes in this, in this town. There's like none. Exactly. This city. Sorry. It's a city. I don't city. think there's lakes in this whole story. There's one. There's a gun. <laughs> this is going so well. No, we go this ahead. Going so well. Guys, this is our first episode back into like actual internet investigating shit. Let's pretend like we know what we're doing. We're not just reading scripts this time. We're like, hey, uh, we have to say things. We have to have original brains. thoughts. <laughs> I'm horrible at those. Uh, but no, so Doug, you seem like the perfect person to kick off where this all started. All right, so there's uh, a lot of moving parts to this whole thing, um, but to really get a sense of like where where everything started to culminate and actually kind of come into the like the limelight of people's, I guess, radars uh, would have to be on a place uh, on. Well, it's always Reddit. It always everything always seems back to either Reddit or yeah. fucking 4chan. But this uh, this subreddit is one that uh, is a little weirder than some of the other ones we've been to, but uh, it, it's r slash 
jailbait. Yeah, weird is weird is the word. I guess you can go with that one. Fuck <laughs> um, no. This, the subreddit is not around anymore, and it's Good. it is exactly what it sounds like. Um, basically, we get this subreddit, and we get a user whose name is Religion of Peace, um, and he was a moderator on our jailbait. Basically, it was just mainly pornography. He's, he's, he's a pervert. It's porn. He's a fucking creep. Yeah, he, he was a pervert. He's just a weird, creepy old man. Um, but he was running this, uh, you know, the subreddit. This is where we first get introduced to him. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, slash our jailbait had lots of, you know, images of underage girls, uh, potentially. But who knows? You can't go there anymore, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, um, it got shut down from like from the CNN, CNN or yeah, something. Yeah, there was a whole CNN investigation yeah, into which it. Which literally, yeah, was definitely for the best. That's, <laughs> we'll we'll cover that. Don't worry, we we're, we're we will we will right all the wrongs in place. <laughs> so if you if you were to go through this man's like Reddit logs and see the things he was posting about, there is so much just shenanigans. He's, uh, he's such a fuck. Yeah, so th this man was posting just all over the place, always talking about political things, you know, advocating for drug use and killing people and just, just seriously, just a human piece of garbage, realistically. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a little besides the point, his posts, um, because we go very quickly into one of his last posts, and it actually is what is going to kind of bring all of this together and what made people start. I guess sleuthing the internet as they are. Yeah, because um, you you normally don't find somebody who posts either perverted or very aggressive things to people and be like, you know what, this is somebody that I want to do a deep dive on. Yeah, normally you don't do that. <laughs> but so so one of his last posts uh, contained the phrase, "They could use a dose of those Lake City Quiet Pills." Now this wasn't what got people up in arms. Uh, what what happened was. Uh, <laughs> what had happened? What had happened was, nice. um, was a user named Two Six. Um, he actually just first and last post ever posted a giant, like eulogy, basically. Yeah. So of the death of Religion of Peace. Do you remember when um, uh, Religion of Peace posted last? Uh, it was July nineteenth. Or something like that. It was Ju July, sometime in July, like uh, in two thousand nine. Yeah. So that's about that's about kind of where we're starting this whole story is July two thousand nine and previous posts by Religion of Peace. But July two thousand nine is honestly, it's kind of considered the starting point of this whole Lake City Quiet Pills mystery. Yeah, and that that literally it was so two six posted this thirteen hours after Religion of Pete's. Pete's death. <laughs> Religion of Pete. Religion of Pete. <laughs> um, but literally, that was Two Six's first and last post on Reddit. So, oh shit! Okay. Yeah, it, it was. It was literally same time, same day. Um, and he definitely goes into kind of what happened to this person. And uh, Jason, I think you have. Yeah, and I have the the full post. If you guys would would like to hear what he has to say. Yeah, shout it into my butt. I will, you know, open it up. <laughs> Scream real loud in my right, ass. Guys, give us one sec. We're going to open up Doug's butt. I'm the person who provided Religion of Peace the space for that old guy's image host. Milo died today. He was 79 years old. He died at his desk looking at your site. Milo was a mean old fucker. Mean and honorary. He hooked me up with my first gig when I got out of the army. I didn't like finding him like that. Milo don't have any living relatives and no real friends. And other than his landlady and a few people where he worked, he didn't talk to anyone about much of anything. Me? He just tolerated. As I said, he was mean. I think he used that as a shield to keep people away from him. Milo thought God was some kind of con game thought up by some lazy sons of bitches who didn't want to work every day. So he's going into the fire on Monday without a service, just like he wanted. I'm planning to dump his ashes in the woods in Pennsylvania, near where he was born. Can't put them right there now, because there's a mall there. I gave the girl next door his raggedy old cat and most of his books. His computer's in tronic shit he tagged for the disabled vets and the VVA. 
All the rest of the stuff is for the Salvation Army. All those years and everything he owned fits in the trunk of my car. I don't know what else to say. I'll miss him. Miserable bastard. So yeah, as as you guys kind of can see, um, he dead. Yeah, he's he's very dead, like super dead. And again, this was so. Religion of Peace is Milo, and that's the person who died. Um, didn't we'll, have we'll any call friends. Him, we'll call him Milo from now on. Yeah, we'll just call him Milo, and let's go ahead and ignore the fact that I got a so. <laughs> before we go further, I got a phone call last night oh, as I was God. leaving work, and it was from uh, someone who was becoming very good friends of the podcast, DX Phoenix. DX Phoenix, my guy. Yes, he uh, he shared a story with us. He gave us some follow up. Um, but I just got done res- researching a bunch on this topic, and you know, Milo is a name that pops up a fucking lot. Yeah. So I get a phone call, and it says you are receiving a call from Milo. Do you accept? And I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> and I hit no. Well, it turns out Milo is DX Phoenix, and he's leaving us a message to follow up his creepy story. So thank you so much, Milo slash DX Phoenix. But also, fuck you for scaring the <laughs> shit out of me yeah. when I was trying to leave work. Yeah, it was super funny. I just, I see a message from Jason. He's just like, he's like, bro, I just declined a message from like an unknown Milo. And I was like, oh God, we, we've all been researching this all night. <laughs> right. Here it comes. <laughs> Turn Turns out it's just a very unfortunately timed phone call from a fan. So thank you so much for for filling us in. We hope that you're safe and you're okay in lieu of light. Uh, what happened last night? But yeah, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll toss in your uh, your voicemail yeah, at some point. We'll we'll see. Probably not in this this episode. Bone we have a lot maybe. to do. So speaking of a lot to do, so what you guys just heard was the post from uh, two six on Reddit. Angel 2-6. So on Reddit, he's actually just 2-6. Yes, but... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah? (laughs) So cast. Cool, good job, Mike. So we we are going to call him Angel 2-6 from now on, but there's a distinct correlation that his name is 2-6 on Reddit, and you'll understand why he's called Angel 2-6 a little bit later. Um, It all starts to make more sense. But So he just described the death of someone who he obviously knew, and one of this person's only friends, Milo, or Religion of Peace, who is now dead. Um, and, like, as you heard, like, he just gave his stuff to just like, the neighbor lady. Like, didn't really have any family, any friends. So, like, where, what, what the fuck do you do with all of that? But you that's, donated. He, yeah. he donated it to a girl next door. So good for him, I guess. But um, this is kind of where, this is where we find out that Milo is dead. And I know you're all wondering, why the fuck are you guys talking about this right now? We promise. Bear with us. It gets way fucking better in about, I don't know, ten, five, ten minutes? We're just kidding. We need, we need, we need to set... Ahead. No, we, we need to set all this up, because if you guys, if you hear what's happening later without this whole setup process... Um, what the hell? It's, what that is? What it is? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it's been too long. If you hear what happens without the setup, it's not going to be as impactful. Do we That's learn true. any more about this two six feller? Yeah, we, we do. We learn a lot more about him. So, one of the things that uh, connects Angel two six to Milo mainly is that we learn that Angel two six actually is the guy hosting a image sourcing website called Lake City Quiet Pills. <laughs> For Milo. How do we find that out? Your mother. Um, Janine. <laughs> Why are you giving him all the details, Mom? <laughs> um, <laughs> but he actually, well, the the way we know that is because he told everyone. Oh, cool. He's like, I am, I'm the guy that h- held the space for him to do this. And if you read through some of the, I guess, like his old Reddit posts, uh, Milo's old Reddit posts, you'll see him talk about his image hosting site because... A, this was, like, very, like, early stage Reddit where people were kind of posting whatever they wanted. Yeah, this was, like, what, like, 2007 or something? It was very early. Yeah. 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 Something like that. I don't remember. But, yeah, it's early, early, early Reddit. Mm -hmm. But, basically, he wanted a, uh, an image place to host images that he could moderate, um, without things getting too fucked up. So, um, that website was called LakeCityQuietPills.com. And when you go there, it would kind of turn into uh, this old guy's image host. And it literally, in the banner above, in this big blue letters, it says, 
this old guy's image host. And like, yeah. that's like, we're not just saying that. Like that's the name of his image hosting site. There's yeah. one thing I'll I'll brush on real fast. Did you uh look into Fark at all? Yeah, bro. Okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> I'm just going in order, my friend. Oh, Mike's okay. just excited. I am. He's been away for a second, and we hit, none of us have done research like this in a while, so we're we're all very, very, very excited about to do this right now. So that gets me to my next point. Um, the Fark. internet, uh, <laughs> doing what they do best, uh, decided that once this post was made about Milo's death, they were going to scour the internet for this two sixes emails on other sites. And one of the most prominent ones they found him on was a website called Fark. Uh, F A R K. Fark. Do you have uh, to say it like that or with like a Boston fark. accent? Fark. 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 Anyways. Um, so <laughs> Fark was like basically the, the predecessor to what Reddit is uh, just another forum image place to go post your stupid thoughts. Um, but the way they found him on this site was that they basically found out that he had an email that was angel.2.6 at lakecityquietpills.com. They got oh. him. Dead to right. It comes together. So we're now seeing this Lake City Quiet Pills all over the place. Um, there are actually multiple other websites with this username, and surprisingly enough, uh, one of those websites actually had a post from Religion of Peace um on it as well so we kind of had this confirmation not only from the you know the lake city quiet pills.com like domain name but now he's also posting on a different website on a forum with the same guy so they're very close you know closely connected now so this as it does led the internet into proceeding to assume that these two people actually might have been the same person so when I say the same person, let me uh, let me clarify. I don't mean two six and religion of peace. I mean two six and angel two six because right now we have the internet basically scouring for any traces of these two people and where they came from and what they were doing. Mm. So when we say two six and angel two six, we can now kind of assume these are the same users. The way that their mannerisms are, the spellings that they do of their you know, the way they talk online. Um, just when it comes to their, you know, you got your apostrophes in weird places, you've got the word tolerated. Spelled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in the same brain. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, uh, the pieces are coming together the puzzle's starting to connect. Um, we're starting to get clearer images of what might be taking place here. Yes. Um, very good, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> First Headmaster Peter, Mike, TM. so I'd like to give you a gold star. Yes, for the day. I wanna, I wanna kind of build off of what Doug was saying before. How, um, if you went on this guy's Ferk uh, account, you could find it <laughs> Angel Two Six at Lake City Quiet Pills dot com. Which okay, um, bef can we still make email addresses at Lake City Quiet Pills dot com? Because I'd like to use that. I don't know. Why didn't we email this fucking? Because there's only twenty four hours in a day and. <laughs> this took up a lot of that 24 hours <laughs> <laughs> um but uh lakecityquietpills.com essentially um doug uh mentioned what it was before but i'll mention it again real quick it was uh basically uh just an image sharing website yeah mostly porn like imgur like, oh not like, like imgur i have no i have that in here like imgur but for porn <laughs> I have that on I mean, here. like Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, it was like Tumblr before, before Tumblr, Tumblr was got... dumb. I, I, that's funny. I actually put that in here. It says, I like, promise Hunger I didn't look at your notes. Oh, for fuck's sake, what is this? Just well, keep going. Uh, Don't let it okay. deter you. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> I um, think it's already deterred him, Doug. All right, yeah, it's just bothering me now. <laughs> Doug gave me a post-it note. You guys, if you ever want to distract Mike, just hand him a post-it note. You like Wendy's? Send me some... I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I got a four for four, which is pretty cool. But. Yeah, try the four for four. <laughs> Who's Wendy? Not hit you in the face, bitch. <laughs> Anyways, um, um, if you guys want me to pass Mike a post-it note, uh, DM me. Oh, okay. oh, with a specific. Yeah. So everybody, let's just Great. put this out there right now. If you guys, w if you guys have suggestions for post-it notes for Doug to pass Mike during recording. We start recording at about I don't know. We sit down at like eight eight thirty. 
hit record at about 8.45, maybe 9-ish. So if you're anytime past 9, you're good. Yeah, go ahead and distract Tuesdays. me even more from <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That's really cool. Yeah, what are you much. supposed to be doing right now? Talking about LakeCityQuietPills.com. Cool, Keep going. why aren't you And how that? it's a porn dumping site. I told you, site. don't let it deter you. So essentially... Um, <laughs> It was just like I'm. I'm good for porn, basically. But if you look just a little bit deeper into the site, like let's say the HTML code, mm -hmm. um, you would find something that seems pretty damn familiar. You will find a phrase that says, "Dispensing Lake City Quiet Pills to Lousy Bastards in Need of Permanent Rest Since 1968." Oh, now where have we heard that before? Well, we heard it in a tagline from a not a tagline for Religion of Peace, but he mentioned it. That's his true. last post. Exactly. Yeah. Um, under that uh, post, you can find uh, like random names and acronyms that, to this day, some of them haven't really been like solved, like what they mean by the internet. It's a bunch of weird shit, is what it is. Yeah. Um, so far, just kind of strange. Why? Why are you talking about? pills and dispensing them on a porn site i'm here for booby not prescription so if you heard if you heard the phrase dispensing lake city quiet pills like what, what would you what would you assume that meant no context personally yeah. i mean reading what people th from what people say makes more sense to the context of this but with no but context. With no context i thought this was going to be some giant like conspiracy about the government putting like giving people like fake pills or something like they're putting if fluoride you... in the water <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it'd be something where like they paid a doctor and the doctor would give you like your fucking medicine for the month but one of those yeah. pills in the medicine would actually be a lake city quiet pill and it's like a whole thing i thought it was gonna be something like that oh turns out lie, i kind of did too yeah turns out i was drastically wrong <laughs> jason go <laughs> no, and tell us what it is that's really. fine um so lake city quiet pills that does have it has a hidden meaning so, like we have previously said, in 2009, that's kind of when we found out about Milo, Milo's death, right? And we found this out through the user 26 on Reddit, which we have now equated to the user Angel26 on FARC and some other forums. Yep. FARC. You guys might be wondering what the connection to Lake City Quiet Pills are. Um, basically, this whole thing is, it, from, to me anyway, it seems like it's stemming from... Uh, Angel 26's like tagline or signature on his posts on Fark. You do see it there, yeah. You do, and every almost every post that he posts has the tagline of dispensing Lake City quiet pills to miserable bastards since 1968. And you can see this as early on as like 2001. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty much it's always there with his posts. And why 19 why 1968? Why why all of this? So. If you dig a bit, you can find a uh, a town in Ohio, Lake City, right? Iowa? Lake or, sorry, City. Iowa. You're right, Iowa. Not God, why do I, I always confuse those? Damn um, you, Pence. Wait, no, it's Indiana. Look at this! We're <laughs> fucking up the Midwest all over the place. Um, so, Iowa. Lake City, Iowa. There is a uh, an ammunition factory. It's about 15 minutes outside the town of Lake City, Iowa. Now, knowing that information, if you heard the, the fucking tagline, dispensing Lake City quiet pills since 1968, what might you think? They're bullets. They're goddamn bullets. Lake City quiet pills, like, it just fucking makes sense that they're I'm bullets. I'm still going with my original theory of sleepy pills. <laughs> well, we've this got, has ZZZ quill written be all, all right. over it. We've got two very, very, very prominent <laughs> theories here. Um, but no, so most people would be led to assume that Lake City quiet pills are just bullets yep. from one of the world's, or the, it's the, the West's largest ammunition factories It's the U.S.'s largest um like producer of bullets for personal firearms right they, they make like 1.9 the billion bullets a, a year or something like that too yeah. many one way would say. way 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 too one many. would argue 1.9 billion bullets a year is probably too many bullets but if they're selling them whatever but also why are we using that anyway so we have this this ammunition factory outside of iowa right it's kind of starting to tie together this this tagline that he has. Um, so let's fast forward a bit to March of 2010. So like we said, this post, the, Milo's post, his death post was made in July of 2009. In March 2010, 
people on Reddit, um, the internet sleuths, as we might call them, started to kind of take notice of a lot of the connecting pieces of information between all like these people, especially 2.6 and Religion of Peace. And they started looking at the HTML coding, just like Mike said, inside the uh, Lake City Quiet Pills website, which is the image host for Religion of Peace right now. As they did that, they found a fuckload of, like, just clear as day English messages written into the HTML coding. Now, if anyone did it has say a ASL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One or two might have, but. If anyone here has a background in programming, you know that there are no English fucking words aside from things that are assigned to, like, little taglines that have to do with a command prompt or something like that. There's no conversations with a computer or anything like that. These are all messages between people who are frequenting the site. And so <clears throat> my job is literally to fix websites. Now, when you inspect the, like, the site, uh like log that you, that you would have to click on to yeah. get to these like this like little forum board um whatever program he was using to basically host this website he would have had to put this in in a, on a level that like literally would not show it on the website so like obviously it this wasn't anywhere on the ho like the actual website you had to go in inspect the source code and then you would see these job you know this forum board. Yeah. Which, absolutely. If you, if Which, you, sorry, dug a bit deeper into Religion of Peace's, like, history, uh, it does mention that he went into computer technology in the yes, 80s. So, because kind of makes sense that he would be able to do that. He's been fucking with computers for a good yeah, portion of his Yeah, he blamed it on, like, his old, frail body mm -hmm. not being able to, like, be a part of the workforce. So, he went into computers, which, again, all fucking lines up with what we're finding here. Mm -hmm. So, these. I guess what we can call them as armchair detectives. Um, they were, you know, combing through all of these messages hidden in this HTML code, and they found a they found a bunch of shit. They found uh, messages basically referring to someone named as Shade, who is apparently maintaining maintaining calendars, and then you have somebody named Angel, who is in charge of posting jobs to the EU and Asia. And following that, there is a very specific piece of information saying nobody is to be sent to ME. Me! So we don't exactly know what ME stands for, but in the context of, you know, EU and Asia, probably ME is probably, probably Middle East. Probably. Also, Angel, wherever you heard that name before. Yep. Mm -hmm. One post on Reddit, right? Just to declare Milo dead. And here we are. And we find his his alter ego, who's been like kind of equated through the, the, the FARC post versus the Reddit post, is now being equated to these hidden HTML posts on this fucking Lake City Quiet Pills website. We also find a message about Milo dying. Yep. And basically all the same shit that was already covered on Reddit. Yeah. But they also have the information that... He is dead, and his iron key has been bricked. Now, do you guys know what iron keys are? I'm sure, at this point, I'm sure you do. Yeah, I do, because that was my topic. Cool. <laughs> Mike, how about you go ahead and tell the people you what iron are keys are? To, I mean, essentially, uh, an iron key is like... Uh, uh, I, what's the easiest way to, to put this for people? It's like a... It's a very well-encrypted USB, USB drive. Yeah, yeah. They cost like... But like the cheapest you can find for a very small USB that is like an iron key is like 250 bucks. Whereas if you get something that's actually functional, it's like a thousand fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's a USB that's super encrypted for you to store very private information on. Basically, what happens is if somebody tries to break the encryption, it renders all data on the USB useless. It corrupts yes. the fuck out of it. So um, like no one will know exactly what was on there. Yeah. Um. But essentially, like like Jason said, um, this post was made the exact same time uh, that Religion of Peace, the, the, the death message for Religion of Peace was posted on Reddit, too. Um, so the same day Religion of Peace died, a message was posted on the hidden message board of the site, uh, Lake City Quiet Pills, saying the exact same thing that Jason said. It was saying the same thing that was said on Reddit. Milo died, gave his cat away, 
Uh, <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's an asshole. Um, but it had those same spelling errors that Jason was talking about previously as well, and Doug was. Um, and then, um, on September 30th, 2009, there were more posts made um, talking about the breaking of his iron key. Um, there's another one that says that Milo's will cleared. Probate. Surprise! Milo was loaded! Email Shade if you were sent out in 2005 to 2009. Shade will have checks cut for you. Amount is by how many times, not by pay total. Small share is 3 to 4k. That's, I'm surprised you got through that. <laughs> you like that the shit? fucking <laughs> spelling on that it is just horrifying. Yes, um, there weren't any other posts that didn't show up until New Year's. Um, he posted a Happy New Year's uh, post. Um, but yeah, it's, it's essentially just a copy-paste of what we saw on Reddit, just on this new forum site. Um, the interesting thing that we see, though, is there is, after the New Year's post... What's a post so what, what is the New Year's post? It literally just says, Happy New Year, basically. There's nothing it, special to that one. There's a but, lot more to that one, actually. You're thinking the one that came after it. Mm -hmm. Oh, am I? Which mentions oh, a birthday party for Milo. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yes. Which, with, talking about the birthday party, we'll get to that. In, in just a, a second. Yeah, just a second, because uh, there's some other weird shit. <laughs> Pertinent information, <laughs> Pertinent maybe. Pertinent information. Yeah, one of, well, so one of the most probably important pieces of this weird, uh, you know, coded HTML inside the, the website is the job listings board. You say job listing board. I say job listings board because you know, that I is get pretty email, much what it is. I get emails from Indeed sometimes. Oh, God. And is that, that is nothing like this. <laughs> no. No, not at all. Uh, so when you look at this, you know, uh, source code, there's legitimately a job listings board. And when I say job listings board, let me just read you a couple of the things that you might encounter. Um, immediate need, 8 to 10 Chinese slash Korean, fluent Korean dialect, accent details after con uh, contact, 12 week half pay sequester on refusal, two ground types, fluent Farsi, Arabic, French, no papers, no problem. Need formed group, 8 to 10, single op delivery bonus. Gentleman's agreement, insurance immediate need. Like, that's all, like, that sounds like a job posting. It sounds like a Craigslist But it has none stat. of the words that I've looked at while looking at job <laughs> postings. <laughs> Correct. And, and ground type. So, Pokemon? He, yeah. Huh. So we're going to get, you're going to see these, like, little abbreviations in these job postings that let us kind of into the fact that we think these might be mercenary job postings. Oh, shit, okay. Like, private militia kind of things, like, things Black like water. that. So we've got, like, CCW, which C could, you know, mean concealed carry weapon permit. Uh, we've got WW, which could possibly mean wet work, which... Or, or... Warrants, want, or wanted, wanted slash warrants. Yeah, I like the wet work one though. I like I, wet work too because I thought wet work was like when a dude pees on you. No, that's just from that's always a sunny golden shower. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so wet work, if you are unaware, is mur murder. Yeah, assassin for hire. Murder. Hmm. Um, so we start seeing these little abbreviations in these job postings, and then you'll see like at the beginning, like fulfilled and stuff like that, meaning that someone went back in. And edited what it said to be like, okay, this job's been filled, this job's been filled, etc. Which then now ties into Milo's uh, fucking will, mm -hmm. saying if you were sent out and between now you're 2005 paid, and 2009, it also ties into the fucking three to four k range, like saying that's the low. Like yeah. this, these are all. This is apparently his will had something to do with compensation for some of the people on this. HTML part of the site. And we have to assume that this this little job postings board has been being updated through the years. Regularly. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. And now we have to assume that 2.6 is now helping out with that. Right. Yeah. Especially now that you see Angel as part of being in charge of job postings in Europe and uh, in Asia. Yeah. So all these pieces are starting to come together now, but... Going back to the birthday party, one of the last posts that we actually see in the source code of this website is something like this. January 2010. Happy New Year, everyone. We're having a birthday party for the old man on the 19th. Party starts at 1500 at the usual. 
Send your RSVP to Shade. FYI, we're booking a room for three days for anyone coming from out of area and overnight for locals. Come hoist one for Dutch Milo. Hmm. Dutch Milo. Yeah, he he's known for his clogs. His, <laughs> his fucking clogs. <laughs> and his wooden love shoes. of windmills. <laughs> you know, the flying Dutchman. Yeah. Um, no, this is very, very, very clearly a reference to the Milo who apparently is religion of peace on reddit right like this is there's no fucking question about that yeah the old man like it all it just makes sense yeah and uh so this this was um fuck i forget the actual day this is early january 2010 yep. okay let's go ahead and go to january 18th 2010 okay so this is where the internet sleuths decide to pay a little bit more attention because, like, this that's not a normal message that you would see in... None of this is normal. No one sees this shit in HTML coding. Like, you don't write messages back and forth unless you're trying to hide something. Um, so, January 18th, 2010, another message shows up uh, in this HTML coding on Lake City Quiet Pills, and it reads as such. We got 38 rooms in the Marriott on 46. Shay has the key cards for locals to pick up at the party. Give your travel name at the desk, and that's it. No ID needed since recovering the bill. Keep the room service under 500, okay? The phones there are not secure. Bus from the hotel leaves at 1330. Car service vouchers for return trip when you are ready to crash. Don't DUI. So... All of this is very cryptic. It's your birthday. <laughs> this is just the. Th this might just be that. I might just steal that from fucking Willy's Wonderland and make it our intro song for this episode. Fuck the money. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's it, so early January 2010. We have this post about a um, a fucking birthday party for Milo, right? Dutch Milo. Um, it's supposed to be held on the 19th. It starts at 3 p.m. They're booking a room for three days for anybody out of town, one day for overnighters. Okay. Now we have something saying that we have 38 rooms in the Marriott. Shade, the one that was mentioned before about doing calendars and shit, yes. has the key cords, key cords, key cards for locals. And you can pick them up at the party. Give your travel name to the desk and that's it. That line right there. The is, fuck's my travel name? Right, my travel name Must is the same. Really? As, is the same as my fucking name. Like, uh, I don't, I don't change that when I'm traveling places. What's your travel name? J Slim Bob. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is like a street Dr. name? Doctor Fisty. Doctor yeah. Fisty. I'm gonna start saying that at a f the to the uh, the NSA when they're you know checking for shit in my luggage. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, it's Doctor Fisty, with a period. <laughs> Doctor Fisty, please. Dr. Fisty. Um, but no, that's that's a fucking weird ass message to see typed in the HTML coding of this fucking website. Um, it's just it's it's fucking strange. Yes. Um. There, there's a lot more that goes into the party as well. They show like the expenses for the party. Oh yeah, but that's um, that's I have that up actually. Right oh, do now. you? Do you want me to read it? Uh, I mean, I, sure if you want, but so we... well, it might be not worth it. There's well, we absolutely should go over it. I think there's a a little bit more we should touch on before uh, oh, okay. we, we go into that message, just because I think it'll it, it'll hit home a bit more after we go over the events that happened. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Bet, bet, bet. So you all are probably wondering what the fuck we're talking about right now. <laughs> like, why why are we talking about this cryptic website? Why are we talking about these fucking HTML coded messages that seem to be a job listing for people who kind of know where to look? Um, we have no idea. Nope, none. Thank you for listening. No, we we have a very, very, very fucking good idea. Um, so, on January 19th in 2010, there was a, a, a pretty well-known assassination of somebody named Mahmoud Al-Mabou. Okay? Mahmoud Al-Mabou was one of the ones held responsible for uh, two, assa two assassinations by the Hamas which is a, an extremist organization within the Middle East, um, killed two people in 1989, okay? Wow. He was also, he, he ran, he, he organized weapons transfers between, like, his organization and some others. Like, he, he, 
he was a bad fucking dude. Like he was not he was not a good guy at all. Now you might be wondering why the fuck I'm bringing him up. Um, <laughs> these two things tie together, and it's it's strange, and it's only by the date January nineteenth. I just came here to have a good birthday party, and now <laughs> is a man dead. <laughs> As far as we know, the birthday party was a thing that was happening on January 19th. It's your birthday. Ka, 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 ka. So, here's kind of a bit of background on uh, Mamu and Amabu. Okay. On, on January 19th, he arrived in Dubai under a fake name with no security detail. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, I need everyone listening to kind of take a breath in the end, take a dive, because not a lot of these things that I'm going to be saying have been factually kind of reinforced. It's, it's, mostly, it's mostly just like, okay, all of these things happening at the same time kind of makes sense. It's, it's a bunch of logical leaps, if, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, Everything I talk about, you can find online. You can watch like security cameras of everything happening in uh, in Dubai. Um, Almabu arrives in Dubai, right, under a fake name, no security detail, and as I've just said, he is a known leader of not leader, but a very very he's high up in the Hamas organization, which again is an extremist organization in the Middle East. So he arrives at uh, at this hotel. Fake name, no security. For some reason, 27 passengers also get off in Dubai and start following him. You know, they're on different flights, but they all arrive around the same time in, hmm. in Dubai. Um, 12 of these people had British passports. Six of them had Irish passports. Four had French and Australian passports, and one had a German passport. Originally, this whole situation of him kind of arriving in Dubai was thought to be like the 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 driving force behind this this birthday party message that you find on these HTML codes because you see all of these people start following him prior to him arriving. Apparently, a lot of these operatives have stationed themselves in different hotels in the city because they didn't know exactly where he was going. As soon as one of these operatives and I'm, go ahead, Mike. King, king. Thank you so much. Operatives. Um, as soon as they found out which hotel he was staying at, they all left their posts. And again, all of this, you can see all of this on, I forget fucking what YouTube video, but there's, there's video of all of this, of yeah. all these people following this guy in Dubai. They all leave their posts at different hotels and they converge on the hotel that he's staying at. They find out he's staying in room 230. Somebody then calls and requests room 237, which happens to be the room directly across from him. Now, again, he's under a fake name. So something, somebody had to know something about all of this. So they, they watch him, they watch him, they watch him. He leaves for the day to go to one of the malls in Dubai because Dubai is famous for their shopping and shit like that. He could have gone to meet some contacts. Who knows? Um, as he leaves, security cameras show about three people exiting room 237, going over to room 230, and start fucking with the door. The elevator actually opens and lets somebody out. Like, somebody who's staying in the hotel is just kind of there. One of these people trying to break into room 230 breaks off from what he's doing to go, like, distract who got out of the elevator, just like small talk and shit like that, then to go back into what they're doing. They break in, they close the door. Hours later, you see Al Mahmoud come back from his trip, goes into his room, nothing, 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 and then you see the three people that were breaking in exit the room, go to 237, they stay there for a, a bit, they then leave the room with luggage in tow, and everybody who had been following this guy from like start to finish when he got off the plane were out of Dubai Within four hours of leaving that hotel room. Within four hours. Efficiency right there. Exactly. When they finally go to check on room 230, they find, holy shit. The descriptions I found of this were fucking <laughs> horrifying. So, from what I've gathered, 
Somebody drugged the guy, then electrocuted him non fatally, <laughs> only to keep doing that until finally smothering him to death with his own pillow. That is the police report that has been released to the public at, up until now. This is kind of the... The census? The consensus of, at least from what I've dug through and what I've seen, like, all this shit lines up so fucking perfectly. And there's one message that happens right after. It's about, it's about two weeks after the actual assassination of Al Mahmoud. So this uh, this post that we're about to that I'm about to read off is entitled Party Bills mm -hmm. and it reads as follows. Here is the final for the party. Hotel rooms 48,341, limo 6,080, bus 569, barbell 18,890, food 8,030, dancers 8,300, miscellaneous tips 850. Miscellaneous experience, 2840. Med supplies, 180. Fat Tommy and Stu are okay. Thank God. To 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 <laughs> to total, $94,080. You all did Dutch Milo proud. Thanks. Jesus. Can I say one thing? Please. That just gets me with this whole thing? Yeah. Is that literally... Two months after this, the whole assassination is when people started finding the hidden source code on Lake City Quiet Pills. Yeah, everything that we've All been talking to, uh, talking about up to this point, uh, it was just now discovered in, in the timeline. Yeah, and like literally it all unfolded without anyone knowing any better. Yeah. yeah, and that actually leads into something I wanted to mention real quick. Um where how you mentioned uh, people just now discovered it um the people hosting lake city quiet pills found out that people were like discovered their secret messages and were posting me on reddit and they just fucking locked that shit down oh yeah like mm -hmm. instead of just being mm -hmm. able to hit like fucking f11 or something and seeing the html nope uh you saw cr encrypted code you see encrypted code you see uh ciphers where if you try to decipher it Guess what? It just leads you to more ciphers. So at this yeah. point, it's damn near impossible to find anything. Yep. And on top of that, like after the, after the people keep trying to like break these codes, eventually the fucking site just goes dark. Like it's just it's fucking it's done. Yeah. And I don't like I don't understand a lot of okay, I we have I know we all have read a lot about this topic. I personally have read a lot of people who have come to the conclusion that this is like an ARG or something like that. ARGs don't shut the fuck down when they gain popularity. No, they just they, do they not. that's it's they the start opposite. To get, they get weirder. They get weirder <laughs> and more intriguing. Like they, that's when they know, okay, we're doing something right. Yeah. If this was something like that, it wouldn't be gone. It would be some. It would be something that was decipherable. Something that a breadcrumb that would lead somewhere. This leads fucking nowhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, it, and if it was a an ARG, you know, they wouldn't pump the, they wouldn't just accelerate the whole, now you have to decipher everything and, and, and find all these codes now. Yeah, there's and, no, and, there's no landline. And make it like super, super extremely difficult. Like there's a difference between like an ARG giving you like, you know, a phrase that you have to turn into hexadecimal that turns into binary, yeah. that turns into a word, because you can do those steps, but this is, they, they've. They it's encrypted, it like yeah. encrypted in yeah. a way that makes it impossible to fucking discover. And that's the difference between something that like something yeah. a little bit more sinister versus an ARG. And I know it's a very fine fucking line to walk, but these guys are either walking it or are hard on one side of this fucking line. Mm -hmm. And like uh if you go to like the Reddit that's all surrounding this whole thing, like no one has an answer for these ciphers. None. Like everybody's like, "Yeah, give me an idea." Like if you figure it out, keep going. Like keep working at it. Even Reddit's it's been like, two "You years. fucking figure it out." <laughs> Dude, I, I read a fucking thread trying to crack one of these ciphers that was like forty two messages long over the span of like six months of people just updating each other, and it was just brick wall after brick wall. And they got so frustrated at the end of this thread. I can't remember who it was or whatever, but they were just they were so fed up with. <laughs> attempting to make progress and getting nowhere they're like this is fucking unbreakable bro i spent like i shit you not yesterday about like a good 45 minutes throwing these fucking ciphers into yeah. 
different cipher websites translating from hex to binary from yeah. binary to tech like going back and forth between random fucking ciphers and i got nothing all i, I was getting like some like different language like symbols but yeah. i was also getting question marks and like well that's so, dings and like holy shit so the different language symbols you actually might have made a step in the right direction because somebody else also found a code translated into like mandarin or something like that mm -hmm. or some shit like that and they had no idea what to do with it after that well i had like a i had like a few solid words but the words i, I mean they just they weren't yeah relevant no to sense anything. to anything like but it, like I, after a while, I was like, "Nope, <laughs> I'm <laughs> over this." Reached. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, "If if they if it's taken them, you know, however many years and haven't they haven't found anything, it's not worth my time." I yeah. would like to. I think this is a good time for me to ask you, boys. Yes. On a, do you think it's real or fake? Shall we do our classic on the can count we of actually, three? Can we cheers to this? Oh sure. Cool. All right, we're gonna toast to because I also have a beer in okay. my hand. Oh god, it's um, a pun. It's a pun. Thrills. For the pills, there it is. The Lake City and yep. the beer, get it? No. Yeah. Cheers, everybody! Clink it, everybody! Mmm, -mm. delicious. <laughs> Love that. So come on, like, are we doing? Right. Yeah. So on three, ready? One, two, three. Real. Real. Knew Ooh. that. I knew. I, I, I knew same. the split. I oh, knew yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, when when the outline was being made, I knew exactly what Mike thought. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I honestly, I think. Um, I, I think I said sheer coincidence. Maybe this whole Lake City Quiet Pills thing is just some troll. Oh, fuck, fuck's sake. What is this? But, but like, but how? Shut your mouth before I fuck it. That's lyrics to something. I just don't remember what. No, nah, it's from a movie. Is it? Yeah. It's also from a song. Probably. Shut, shut your mouth before I fuck it. No, I don't know. I've I never heard know. that one. That sounds a... like, that, that sounds like that fake, uh, song Mike Wazowski made up in Monsters, Inc. Put that thing back for where I come yeah. from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your mouth before I fuck it. Oh, so help me. That was, the, that was the first fucking rendition of it. Um, uh, but anyways. No, Mike, why, why do you think this is fake? Um, I'm I, actually super curious about this. So, you know, it's honestly t hard to really explain. Uh, I mean, for example, um, I feel like, Doug, you say that you, you can't really put messages and everything into HTML without having, you know super elaborate technology or something like you mentioned before that you do at work. I, I, I wouldn't call it no. super elaborate. Well, um, just you have to have the so, knowledge. So basically it. how they're getting those, that text into the source code mm -hmm. is through a thing that I, I don't know if it's the same for every website provider. Like, so like we use uh WordPress yep. um, and how I would put things into the source code is through something called a tag manager. Mm. The tag manager is basically a place where I can put a script that, crawls the site can like on every page of the website so it's constantly running through each page yeah so like if you know a third party wants their widget to populate on the website somewhere i can throw that source or that script into the source code and if you were to inspect the source code of the website on that specific page you'd see exactly you'd see what tag. i put into the tag yeah. yeah um well i just feel like it was a bit too easy to find this like if if you were running a hidden mercenary uh Craigslist, basically, why would you make your uh Tag username line. your why would you make your username Angel Two Six on well, everything and also make your tagline the website that you're hosting it on? It's like if Target was trying to make a goddamn uh, uh was doing like weapons deals and they put it into target.com like it just wouldn't make sense to me and i know there's the whole like hiding in plain sight thing but if it's for like illegal mercenary things why would you even want it to be seen well so it's it's more for it's so it's from what i gather it's for ex-military people who are looking for work in what they do best yeah but why would you advertise that See, the, this, because they're not smart Obviously you know they are. They have this no, whole encryption thing. Just because going you on. know, just because you know programming and you know how to assassinate somebody, does that mean you're smart? I would say if you're making an impossible encryption, I'd say that you're pretty intelligent. So one of the things I want to bring up, and this leads into why I think it might be real, is think of how much the internet's evolved in just the past five years, let alone the past twenty years when mm -hmm. this all was taking place. Now. I don't know. You really have to kind of know what you're doing to like crawl a website like this, especially Reddit. dive into the HTML. And back in 2001, when God knows when that web hosting you know started, 
they could have been doing this HTML like message board for a long time, like in mm -hmm. 2001. Like, yeah, that's maybe... close to the dawn of the internet. Like, that's that's not far away. from That's that. closer to the dawn of the internet than it is to now. Yeah, <laughs> way closer. <laughs> yeah. Um. So basically, what I'm the reason why, like, I, I don't know. I, I, did you finish saying why you think it's fake? I don't want to like uh, just cut you off. I mean, yeah, pretty much. I just think it's like if you're if you're again running a mercenary, uh, uh, basically an assassin. Hitman for Hire website, why would you A, make your username the same on, like, every website, and B, advertise it, unless you're just fucking with people? That's that's my only intake. That, you know? That's fair. And so this, 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 the reason why I wanted you to finish is because I didn't want to, you know... No, you're good. And, and also, Fark, saying. really? <laughs> <laughs> Use better shit. I know it was, like, 2001, but, I mean, come that's on. That's all they had. Yeah. I didn't even know of Fark until Same. this, but... Anyway, so one of the things that, that makes me think it's real is, yes, I think that... I think there's a difference between mercenaries for hire than there is assassins for hire. Yep. Yeah. That's a big difference in my there's mind. There's some crossover... There is. Hmm. They but, might be doing the same thing, but it's not like, hey, I need my fucking wife killed. You got you got me? No, yeah. This it's was a like, political target. Hey, we're not making... Not political, but you know what I mean. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to steamroll you real quick. I did remember one last thing that I wanted to mention. Go ahead. Is because this all started, we pieced it together from r slash jailbait, and r slash jailbait got taken down. You would think they would do some sort of investigation into the mod, my, Milo, and then you can obviously we found this whole story from here. Wouldn't you think there'd be some sort of FBI investigation into LakeCityQuietPills.com? Well, it was so real? Milo was just a mod. He wasn't the host of Correct. Garage. No, Bay. but I, I mean, like he if, was. If it, we, it'd be like it would be like if you posted a bunch of pictures to Imger, and you got in trouble for some reason. It'd be like the FBI being like, "Okay, Imger is like they are partially responsible for this," when in, in reality they're just an image host. Yeah, but a mod, a mod has a lot of responsibility on it. There's, but that's a title given outside the image host. Well, I just like, mean, I just domain. mean, no. Well, well, I just mean like if he's a mod on our jailbait, and that got mm -hmm. shut down for illegal purposes, wouldn't you think, you know, the FBI, someone would investigate the mods a little bit because they, you I'm know, sure take they care did. of the rules and stuff. And if just normal dudes on the you internet were able to tail from this to Lake City, couldn't the FBI have done that? Well, they're not normal dudes, and you have to remember it's 2001. HTML coding, like, nowadays? Well, no, the Reddit thing was, like, 2007. FARC was 2001. FARC was, you're right. Either way, 2007, either way, did you know about getting into a website's, like, code to, around 2007? Did you uh, know that you could do that? I was 12, so no. So probably not. <laughs> I almost guarantee you not a lot of people knew that that was a function, and even if they found the function, they were probably like, oh, I broke my fucking, ex like, Internet Explorer. I, I need to exit and, like, reload it and shit. Like, no one knows what the fuck that is. That was a highly lucrative area of expertise. Yeah, yeah it's not as widely known as it is now, I'm sure. You know, um, yeah, uh, that is true, I suppose. I, I yeah. do see where you're coming from. Oh, though, I absolutely the FBI, yeah, yeah. Uh, just in that sense, but like, I, I, so personally, I do. I think I think this may be real. I don't. I think the assassination part of this, which yes. albeit super interesting, I think is a fucking reach. I th yes, and there's a, there's a logical step to that reach, which it sucks because everyone who is looking at the same way that we are. Will follow logical steps to get to logical conclusions, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why I think it's real is because, like all, like, like I said earlier, for an ARG, you don't shut it the fuck down when exactly. it's gaining popularity. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't let people like, you don't let people in just to like fuck them over and push them out. You just don't do that at all. If you were, if you were, if it's fake, you were doing it for attention. Like that's. That's one, just, one could argue that shutting it down did get him the attention that he wanted. But it never popped back up. Did it have to, though? Stories told, and look how famous the Lake City Quiet Pills is. There's no, what you, there's no story. Like, it's, this is barely a story. And this, look how famous it is. Because of all of the, the mystique around it. Exactly. That's what I mean. That's what I'm trying to say. Is so you're saying that because there's... Because it shut because down. It, because it dead-ended, and none of our answers got answered, mm -hmm. that it's fake? No, not that it's fake. That's what helped it gain popularity. I saying. agree. Yeah. No, everybody wants to know, like, what is this? What is this? Yeah. Like, I get that totally. And that's honestly, that's the reason why, like, so your reason for thinking it's fake is the same reason that I think it's real. 
So, okay, real quick, there's a couple things that I wanted to just briefly mention. I really don't want to get into it all because there's so much more that has to go into this whole thing with the, like, newly created, like, Reddit, mm-hmm. subreddit for this yes, whole thing. Yes, God, let's um, not look at that. Because <laughs> currently, if you look at it, you'll see posts from Shade. It's a f- yeah. Ready? <laughs> yeah, Thank quote, you. quote, unquote, Shade. Um, a lot of the posts are incoherent and don't have any real relevance to anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also have this other fucking subreddit that spawned off of it called, like, LC... QP, uh, QP yeah. out of Africa or whatever. Like, yeah, oh, I I went down that rabbit yeah, hole. It's all stupid. <laughs> it's, I, it's so I, dumb. So it, it kind of spawned a subplot. It spawned <laughs> a, attempts at ARGs. It yeah. seems like somebody sure. game jacked a thing that could possibly have been real or mm. an ARG. I, to be honest, there's there's one thing that I saw while doing my research, um, that uh, fucking uh. Religion of Pieces Reddit account actually had activity on it in 2019. 2019. Yeah. But I, so, okay. Snoop Snoo is down. Yes, it is. And that's super unfortunate because there are zero other tools on the internet right now. So Snoop Snoo was a thing that you could, like, load somebody's <laughs> I've fucking... never heard of that website it's, before. If you were to type... Snoo, it sounds like you're saying, like, noop, noop. <laughs> Snoop Snoo. Death by Snoo Snoop. Basically what it was is you take somebody's Reddit tag and you... Pff, throw it into Snoop Snoo, and it would give you, like, their Reddit activity. It would show you their, like, how many posts they made. But most importantly, it showed you their last post date, even if that post was private. Yeah. Which means you won't see it show up in their post history, but on Snoop Snoo, it'll show you that they posted. Hmm. So I... Was it Barely Sociable? Yeah. Yeah. Barely Sociable, basically, incredibly. He basically, he, there's nothing to back this up, unfortunately, because Snoop Snoo has since been, like, out of service. It, it yeah. just doesn't fucking exist anymore. And, and if, they were, if it was acting wonky, there's really no way we could know for sure. Exactly. So the, you can't see this anymore. And every other Reddit tool that I've looked at, and I looked through, like, seven of them, <laughs> and there's not many more, none of them give you, like, last post date, even, like, for private messages and shit yeah. like that. It's all just, like... Public post activity ends here. Hmm. So, like, there's no way to back that up. So I'm super happy you fucking found that, because mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit, they're yeah. still there? And honestly, had I been able to see that in, like, some kind of scope that had any kind of verifiable, like, evidence behind it, I would have looked at it and said, okay, maybe it is a hoax. Yeah. Because if if Religion of Peace is actually still alive and posting, like... That's pretty significant evidence towards the fact that this is fake. Yeah. I don't know. I do get this weird vibe, like this weird, like, like fucking yay video games vibe shit where yes. that Religion of Peace 2 6, it's They're all the, the same, same dude. Guy. Yeah. It could, I don't very know well be because that. if, if I had more connections like that, then I would be like, yeah, this is all bullshit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But there's just no hard evidence on any of the things that we're talking about, which is really unfortunate. And it's really just all reaching. We're just, like yeah. this whole thing is a big reach, yeah. but it's a very fun. I would reach. say this had me debating if it's real or fake almost as much as like Plibius did. Yeah, like <laughs> Plibius, I still don't have an answer if I think it was real or fake. I honestly do not know. With this one, I'm kind of in the same boat, but leading more towards fake. Yeah, it's like it's teetering, but I'm still kind of up in the air a little. Oh, absolutely. Because like you guys said, there like there's just not enough. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it ends pretty abruptly. I um, did teeter back and forth on this one quite a bit, but like every time f- I went one way, I'd read something mm-hmm. else, and then I'd teeter the other way. Yeah, and, like, yeah. I think I landed on real, purely just here's based off the information that we have. Here's what I think is like this is real without shadow of a doubt. Okay. LakeCityQuietPills.com was hosting some shady shit. Mm-hmm. That's about all I can say. Yeah. Like, yeah. With, with certainty. After that, like, the dates lining up, the fucking expense reports found in the HTML coding of this site, like, those, yes, they all line up to this assassination, right? They all line up. The dates line up. Everything. If... But yeah. you can't you can't prove what any of it fucking means. Yeah. And that's the issue I'm having. That's the disconnect. And that's why I can't say... For sure that this is absolutely real. I would also uh, like to ask a favor from the listeners here. Um, because this was done by, like, you know, apparent, like, military veterans and everything. And it's a, host, a site for, like, ex-military guys trying to find work or something. If you are in the military, if you want to run through some of those posts that we found, 
if there's any like wordage or anything that we missed that yeah. you might know or that we got wrong let us know because that might help clear things up if you have some special knowledge please yeah. send it our fucking way yeah. um the one thing i did want to say is the last thing that i researched was oh this is a clusterfuck i don't know how to get it right but the official conclusion of all of this was that this assassination was basically pinned on um the group that felt, I forget their name, was it the uh, Masood? Mahmoud? Don't listen the, to me. The guy that died? No, it was an organization in the Middle East. Oh, I don't, I unfortunately was, am not knowledgeable on... The two murders from 1989. I, yeah, that, it doesn't help me, but that, yeah. uh, that this guy helped carry out. Yeah. The guy who got assassinated. Um, that, they pinned everything on that group as retaliation. Mm. And I, I just, I can't... I can't accept that because they have, they all have like names in Arabic or Farsi or like, or Palestinian or they're very clearly Middle Eastern names. And then you see some fucking fat white guy that just walks in the door in a suit and tie. Looks like he just got done eating at Golden Corral. It's like, that's not, that is not, he's not from this area. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no fucking way. There's no way. So like. The official explanation, I just, it Even does not make sketchy. It does not make any fucking sense well, to me. Well, what if the first time a government's, uh, you know, hidden, no, not hidden at all. A, a death? We've already covered up Diet Love Pass. You yeah, know, I mean, it's... fuck. In Russia, there's a, a there's some political guy with two bullet wounds in the back of his head, and they marked it as suicide. Yep, obviously, because that's how you shoot yourself. Yeah. Um, but that was Lake City Quiet Pills, everyone. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening, guys. Yes. This is... This obviously got all of us very engaged, and we are so fucking happy to be back to our oh, real normal quick. content. What's uh, up? Real quick. What's uh, up? What are you drinking? <laughs> what are you thinking? There's a bottle here, and it's empty. Yeah. Today, what, what are you boys drinking? Today, we are drinking, uh, well, there's two bottles. We just finished some Maker's Mark. and As the other, per usual. Yes. The other is just some regular old Jack Daniels. Big old Jack Daniels. Not Kentucky fancy bourbon. tonight. Yeah, and I'm trying to... Uh, Cut back a bit, so I'm drinking a Bud Light. Mike's been drinking his wedding spoils. And yeah, <laughs> he's and noticed it's, it's gotten too far. It's so. gotten a bit much. <laughs> so Mike's been I'm, drunk for two months straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna wean it back just a smidge. <laughs> um, just want to get my theme song out there. So absolutely, that's I my mean, favorite part of the what, show. <laughs> one of these days, I will write some kind of music to go along <laughs> with symphony. that. Symphony. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know Jason, about that. Do you have anything you want to say to the people, the beautiful yeah. people? Badoo doo. doo. Damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. I, I actually have a couple of things I'd like to say to some people. Go ahead. Um, be aware of your hotel neighbors. <laughs> like, be aware of their comings and goings. And this is going to help you with my second piece of advice. But as long as you know who is staying around you in hotels, you're fine. So until you do know, please make sure to stay paranoid. Don't and follow that up. I don't know if if you meet your neighbor in a hotel room <laughs> and you're weird. aware of who they are, slap their peen and or slash bean against your peen or slash bean and become peen bean friends. <laughs> yeah. Is that like Eskimo bean brothers? Bean friends. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, just casually slap that shit with someone you just met. It's fine. I would like to tell everyone to go to our link tree, linktree.com slash deludypod. Oh, I'm Mike um, with some helpful advice. Yeah, crazy, right? <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys to go follow us. Yeah, <laughs> follow us, linktree.com slash deludypod. Uh, we're on Patreon. Patreon, if you want to chuck in $2, we'll say hey to you. Um, Patreon.com slash deludypod. Buy our merch. Uh, that link is in all of our bios and on our link tree. Speaking of Patreon, tonight we are recording the final brick uh, that will complete our wall of creepy, creepy, creepy Patreon tiers. Uh, we have a couple recorded for... Well, you're going to see three tiers come out. I'm not going to tell you what they are. It'll let me be a surprise. But, it ooh, a lot of you have been requesting a lot of shit from us, and we are about to fulfill those requests. So yes. be on the lookout. That is happening right after this episode gets done recording. All right. Um... You could also find us on YouTube. As don't look under the internet on YouTube. Um, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Deludipod. Um, basically, put our name 
Diluty Pod just or Google don't look into, Pod. Yeah, or don't look under the internet yeah. into Google. You'll find us. Or go to our link tree, linktree.com slash Diluty Pod one more time because that is where all that shit is. All the links are already there for you. That's the point of link tree. Um, I also would like to tell everyone to go and leave us a voicemail or a text on our Google phone number. Be aware. Be aware. It stops you after three minutes, but just call back. Yeah, Please. just call back. I don't know um, how to go around that. <laughs> the phone number is 630-909-9366. One more time, that is 630-909-9366. And then one more time for my rules of three, that is 630 Dudley the Dragon. Bop. Six zero zero nine one. Um. So leave us a voicemail or a text. We will read it or play it on the show. Actually, we do have one that a uh, voicemail that we'll play on the show. Do you guys want to? Actually, it's a follow up from our uh, hometown horrors. Yes, Do you so, want to fucking play it? I think it's a good idea. It's, it's actually you, pretty spook. Um. I would also spooky. like to say if you're going into a hotel room, break into your neighbor's hotel room, uh, and give them a raspberry, just right on their tummy. And if a they wake up, one. if they wake up, just like, shh, and put them back to sleep. Seductively, seductively with raspberries. Yes, Give them the people's elbow and put them back <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> um, but anyway, here is uh, from CX Phoenix or DX Phoenix. Sorry. <laughs> wow, you butchered that. DX AKA Phoenix is, Milo. Yeah, uh, the voicemail we left us last night. So yeah. here it is, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We will leave you with this bit of spook. Hey guys, uh, DX Phoenix here. You can call me Milo. Um, thanks for including my story in the last episode. Um, to answer some of the questions from that one, yes, I still work there. Uh, the eyes were an orangish yellow, and there were no tragedies following, uh, but we did find a dead deer uh, a little bit behind the tree line about a week later, so that was reassuring. Um, but uh, unfortunately, that wasn't my last kind of weird experience. Um, something happened a little bit ago um, that I'd like to share with you guys. Um, the last one was a little goofy, because um, for all I know, I could have just been seeing things. Uh, but what recently happened really got to me. Um, about a week ago, it started. Um, I work third shift, like I said in the last story. So I'm usually in bed during the middle of the day. Uh, and nobody else works any late shifts, so my house is empty while I'm sleeping. Um, so I'm asleep, and all of a sudden I get woken up by my doorbell. I usually don't answer it uh, during the day because I need to sleep, and it's usually just like deliveries that'll get dropped off. Uh, so I try to go back to sleep. And then it rings again. And then it rings again. And it gets to the point where it's ringing like every five seconds. Uh, so I get out of bed, I throw some clothes on, and I go to answer it. Um, I'm pissed off at this point. Uh, so I answer the door, and I go, yeah. Uh, and there's this guy who looks really sketchy just standing there on my porch. Um, I don't know why, but sometimes you just, like, you get a vibe from people, and his was not good. Uh, he had a cheap suit, like, a kind of weaselly face, really skinny, and a bad comb over. Um, and he just kind of stands there, and he's not saying anything. And then he just starts, like, leaning from side to side, and it's seems like he was kind of just trying to look past me into my house. Um, so I'd go, what do you want? And he just goes, how are you? Like, dead man. And I'm like, what the fuck kind of question is this? This guy's been pounding on my doorbell. So I go, not great, I was sleeping. And he goes, is that so? And he's like, still trying to peer behind me. Um, at that point, my cat was sitting in the room by the door. And he is the sweetest creature that I've ever known in my life. And he absolutely loves every person that he ever meets. But takes one look at this guy and he kisses his fucking heart out and just bolts out of the room. Um, so at that point, I was a little creeped out um, and a lot pissed off. Uh, this guy is clearly... So... It got cut off about halfway through, uh, but I'll just continue here, I guess. Um, so you skip ahead about a day, and it's after work, and I'm about to fall asleep again, and the doorbell rings again. <clears throat> so I don't give this guy a chance to ring again before I'm at the door, and it's him again. So I throw the door open, and I go, what do you want? Who are you? 
he looks at me real nervous and just goes, I'm just a friendly guy. I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? But I see him, like, looking back and forth. And he is looking inside my house this time, but he's looking in my front yard. And I look where he's looking, and there's another dude in my fucking yard, like, just walking up towards the house. And I yell at him to go away. And I look at the other guy, and I tell him to stop ringing my fucking doorbell. And they both kind of, like, look down at their feet, and they run away, like kids who got in trouble for something. But these are, like, two grown-ass men. So I go back to sleep, but I can't really fall asleep because it's, like, this is creepy at this point. So, like, an hour later, I turn around in bed, and the motherfucker from the from the front door is, like, six or seven feet away from my house, and he's trying to look in my bedroom window. So I jump up, and I run to my door, and I open it up, and I scream at them that if I see either of them on my property ever again, I'm calling the police. So two days go by with, like, nothing. So I figure, okay, I've scared them away at this point. And then yesterday, I, I I see them for the first time since then. They're, like, two houses down from me, just standing alongside the road, just staring at a different house for, like, 20 minutes straight. Like, I just watched them standing there looking at this house. And then they just turn and they walk away. So I have no idea what the fuck is going on with these guys. Um, I really prefer not to have to find out. Um, but yeah, that's the most recent, uh, the most recent spookiness that has happened to me. Um, I'd really prefer if it wasn't around Halloween, uh, because that adds to it being creepy. Um, but I prefer it to not happen at all. But, uh, hopefully it makes for good content for you guys. Uh, love the podcast. Uh, yeah. Peace out, guys.